guys. Over here with my buddy Pete up here in Fort Smith. And uh, like I was telling y'all the other day, Pete and I tried to record his encounter story last time he was down in Oklahoma. And uh, we run out of memory card space. Uh, and right when he was getting to the good part, it cut off. So we didn't realize that till later. But anyway, we're over here. I've come to Arkansas for my brother's wedding. And stopped by here. Stayed the night at Pete's house last night. And uh, let me tell you something about Pete. I've known Pete for several years. Uh, one of my well, one of my best friends for sure. You at least in the top three. So anyway, but uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, you know, he never had told me this encounter story before I posted on Facebook on November the tenth about my son's uh, encounter in our front yard. He reached out to me. And I remember him telling me that it was almost like a mental block he had that he had completely forgot about it. And then once reading what I shared on Facebook, it kind of reminded him of a, 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 an occurrence when he was younger. And uh, it, it goes in line with the reason why I started sharing my footage and putting my experiences out there because it relates to children. Because he was a, a you know young kid when this happened. And... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit there and let Pete tell you about uh, what had happened with him when he was younger down in uh, central Arkansas. Okay, so this happened in uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, uh, down a road called St. Raphael Road. It's uh, way out in the middle of the woods and uh, a lot of similarities to Mark's place. There's houses around. Once you get to the end of the houses, it is nothing. And Byron Bartholomew runs right through the middle of it. Um, I was going to this store called Heflin One, Heflin's One Stop, and uh, uh, something I did all the time, and I, I took this particular trail, because it just kept me off the blacktop, and I just like going down the trail. And I had a big old red chow with me named Bear Dog, and uh, we come up on this cow that had been basically just torn apart. <clears throat> and it was confusing. Uh, because I couldn't think of one critter that I knew of that was strong enough that could just tear a cow into pieces. And I was studying the cow, and I talked to my dog like he was a person, because he was my, one of my only friends then. I think I was seven or eight years old. I said, I don't know, Bear Dog, what you think? And I turned around and looked at Bear, and Bear had done left me. Now, this is significant because Bear was super protective of me. And uh, you couldn't get within 10 feet of me. I mean, really, he'd bite the piss out of you. He, he just couldn't come up on me like that. But he abandoned me in the middle of the woods. And that's when I kind of get nervous. But when I got scared was when I realized how quiet the woods were. I mean, there wasn't a bird chirping. There was nothing. That's when I got scared. And uh, all I had was a, was a pellet gun. So I had pulled it up like it was a, you know, like a real gun. And I walked backwards uh, for probably 30, 40, 50 uh, steps. And then I turned around and got out of there. Now I didn't hear nothing. I didn't see anything. Um, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I had just been in some real danger. So uh, I went back home. And this same red chow that done killed dogs and bit people was hiding up on the front porch and refused to come out. And uh, I didn't know, didn't know what had happened. Now, where it gets a little hazy is I don't know that if this was the same night. But one night, something came and tapped on my window. And at that time, uh, I was convinced werewolves were real. I had been convinced all my life uh, that werewolves were real because of what happened that night. But something tapped on my window. I was laying in my bed. And I pulled all the covers up in a big old ball over my head. And I was looking through the holes <coughs> in the blankets. And I could see a shape. I could see a shoulder. I could see an arm. And I could see where the arm was attached to a chest. I never saw the neck and the head. Now, mind you, my bed, uh, the head of my bed, was right up against this window. These, uh, it was a double window. And I was looking straight up out of the window and still could not see its head. It, that meant it was a way taller than the top of the window. But in my mind, I never once thought about Bigfoot. Hell, I thought it was a dang werewolf, you know. And I went flipped out, told my mom about it. And she's like, you know, go back to bed. There's nothing out there. Um, 
And it wasn't like there was a bush or a tree that was that, 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 that was hitting the, the, my window in the wind. There was nothing outside of my window. Um, and when I went out the next day, there was the grass was clearly uh, <coughs> mashed down. Um, but you know, it, it tapped on my window, and it didn't tap like like of all the things it could have done. It could have clawed at my window. It could have growled. It could have done anything if, it, if its intention was to to scare me. But it didn't. It tapped on my window like it wanted to communicate with me. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to communicate with it at all. And uh, that was just one of, uh, of several things that happened uh, out there. Uh, anybody from Pine Bluff knows this area, knows that it's a, it's a creepy area anyway. I can't tell you how many times where I felt like uh, riding down the, the blacktop that there was something in the woods that was chasing me. I could like I could hear it, and I'd be riding my bike, and I just felt like it was behind me. But I never saw nothing. I never heard. I never. I, I never saw anything. Um, and then uh, I basically, uh, as I grew up, sort of pushed it out of my mind, and didn't think about it at all until what you had going on, and uh, we started looking at it and looking how they seem to be interested in kids. Um, to what end? I don't know, but they are definitely interested in kids, and. You know, it, there again, it didn't claw, growl, or none of that. Th none of those things. It tapped on my window. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But you know, you and I. Uh, how many? How many Bigfoot conversations we had prior to my Facebook post? None. Exactly. The conversation never come up. This is not uh -uh. something that we followed. This is something we were both completely ignorant on. Now I know a lot of people that's following my channel. You hear a lot of similarities in his, uh, in, in what he just told you about uh, typical Bigfoot behavior. Now it just seems typical, but at the time when he was telling all this stuff, and uh, I'm completely ignorant to the subject. I didn't realize, you know, like the pacing in the side of the woods and the, the, uh, you know, the, the lot of tapping on the window. You hear stuff like that in other, uh, you know, stories and stuff around on YouTube and whatnot. Um, but. You know, now that I've been more educated on the subject, you know, you definitely hear a lot of similarities in what he uh, just told y'all in past, you know, stories around the, you know, around the internet. And, uh, you know, like I said, it centers around children and it just, uh, with him being young and I remember the dog, that he, he's told me a story about the dog, that uh, the child that he had, that, you know, he was picking berries one time. And uh, you went across a black bear, face to face with a black bear on the other side of the, of the berries, and uh, the, the dog jumped to action, chased the black bear off. And uh, you know, I mean, just, and, and you know, y'all know from my from my story that you know I've got a, a protective or aggressive dog, depending on how you want to look at it. And it was outside my house one night, and it was acting so out of character and whining that. Uh, that when I showed my mother the video, she didn't even believe that that was actually her dog, Bailey, because it was acting so out of character. And then the video was analyzed later by a uh, animal behavior specialist, and she said that the dog was acting, you know, like it was in distress, that it was, you know. I remember that video. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, for his dog to exhibit kind of like the same behavior as our dog, Bailey, and uh, the night that we had the shadow approach our house and things like that, but... Um, I thought it was significant that Pete, you know, come on and tell, you know, his uh, his encounter, his story for y'all. So y'all just follow it away, like I said. And, and what I do with the information like this, whether it be mind speak or the the woo stuff or the cloaking and all the other different things that people, a lot of controversy in the Bigfoot community is, the way I do it, I put it all in the bucket. And then if anything happens around my property that I can compare something like that to, then I take it out, and, you know, and reconsider, and, and, and you know, remember the, the encounters and the stories and the people that shared that around those type of weird uh, uh, circumstances. So, you know, uh, hopefully the parents of young children and stuff will file this away. Just you know, keep it in the back of their mind in case one time you know their kid comes talks about somebody tapping on the window or some type of similar uh, behavior that Pete shared here today. So, and that's about it. We're fixing the. Getting headed back to Oklahoma, so y'all have a good weekend. Stay safe. God bless. Take it easy.